Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining me in the locker room on this Thursday, October 26th. I'm Alan Locker. Michael Damian first gained recognition for his 18-year run in the role of rock star Danny Romilotti on the number one rated daytime television drama, and he has just returned to Genoa City this fall. On stage, Michael has starred as Joseph in the Broadway production of the Andrew Lloyd Webber, Tim Rice musical, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, which broke box office box office records in both Los Angeles and on Broadway, while also earning him a Grammy nomination. In addition to his Broadway career, Michael has released five albums and has had eight top 40 hits, including the smash single Rock On, which shot up the Billboard music charts, landing at number one and garnering him two gold records. He won the BMI Songwriting Award for his hit single, Was It Nothing At All?, and has also written and produced songs for the soundtracks A Princess for Christmas, Flicka 2, Flicka Country Pride, Marley and Me, The Puppy Years, and Sweeter Side of Life. And get ready, he's got a new Christmas album coming out very soon. Michael has also enjoyed a prolific career behind the camera and has co-written, directed, produced over 15 films and television movies. He is filmmaking partners with his wife, Janine Damien, and they have produced Much Ado About Christmas, Hallmark's number one movie of the year for 2020, Christmas Waltz. Michael recently produced and directed the upcoming film, Paris Christmas Waltz, starring Matthew Morrison, which recently wrapped production in Paris of all places. And in 2022, he produced the popular Netflix film, Falling for Christmas, starring Lindsay Lohan. And his second film with Lohan, Irish Wish, premieres on Netflix in early 2024. It is such a pleasure to welcome Michael Damien to the locker room. Hey, Michael. Hey, Alan. How are you, you buddy? I am well. It's so great to have you here, truly. Uh, good to be on your show. Thank you. I apologize for um, having to postpone. We were, as you just mentioned, in the middle of finishing the movie Paris Christmas Waltz. And we're, anyway, we're, we just wrapped it up and, uh, you know, finished post-production on it. But thank you so much. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry you had to be in Paris at all. <laughs> no, you know, it's tough when you have to make a movie and, and, and you know, be in Paris and, and, uh, it was so much fun. Oh, I can't wait for everyone to see it. It's really, uh, it's just a thrill to be able to to film, you know, in front of all the iconic locations, the Eiffel Tower, the Arc de Triomphe. I, I, I mean, that alone is is worth the price of you know watching a movie, like just seeing Paris. Let alone, you know, the story will come, but you know, getting that beauty because I I truly, I mean, Paris for me is one of my favorite cities in the world. Uh, well, mine too. And you know, for those that love Paris, but can't travel right now or, or, or don't really want to, you know, get on a plane. I think uh, Paris Christmas Waltz is basically going to be your Christmas vacation in Paris. So <laughs> we, 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 we really show it big time. So I think, I, I don't think you'll be disappointed. That's terrific. Well, before we dive into everything YNR, Pam, a fan shared that she just received her John Stamos audiobook memoir. And the first few minutes he mentions his friendship with you. Oh my How gosh. did you and John first meet? Were, were, was it the early days of General Hospital and YNR? Well, no, he hadn't gotten a uh, General Hospital. Uh, I was on Young and the Restless and and recording and making records. And uh, John and I met actually at an acting class. And I was I was taking uh, uh, this really great acting class. Uh, it was uh, Guy Stockwell, uh, uh, Dean Stockwell's brother's uh, school. And uh, I remember oh, wow. meeting him there and we, you know, we went out and we hung out and we went to, you know, clubs and parties and PR events. And I introduced him to some people. And uh, so thank you. I, I really appreciate it. You know, I haven't read the book. I can't wait to read it. I really, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And uh, John, I'm going to order it. I've already got it. <laughs> it sounds, you know, yeah, fascinating. I saw him, uh, I saw him I, talk about some of what he shares and it's a wide range of, uh, you know, his life. That's great. Well, and I got to spend time with his family. You know, we, you know, go down to Orange County and, 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 and spend time with them and uh, yeah, great times. And uh, he's, he's such a talent. I'm so proud of him, what he's accomplished and, and how far he's come. And he's, and he's still a really nice guy. And that's really probably the most important thing. If you can, <laughs> if you can go on this journey and treat people kindly and, and uh, you know, uh, don't take it too seriously. He seems like whatever I, what I see all his posts he does on Instagram, he's always having a good time and and has a seems to have his his same wonderful sense of humor. 
Well, I love that you even say that. It, it just, you know, it's really, it's not that hard to be nice. It's harder to be well, not nice. It's, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, I know we're in a tough business, but, you know, it comes down to people and you got to treat people with respect and you got to treat people just simple. Treat them the way you want to be treated. Okay. If you want to be treated badly, okay, then do that. But if you want to treat people, if you want to be treated kindly, then you got to put that out. And that's just, I think that's a Absolutely. simple formula for success. Absolutely. Well, as I mentioned in the intro, you have a new Christmas album coming out and a new yes. song, Bring Back the Christmas Card, which is being released next week. Tell us what it was like. Is this your first Christmas album? No, it's actually, I've, I had a family Christmas album out. Uh, I can't remember what year it was out. I'm sorry, I'll have to check. But, you know, this is, uh, well, what's really fun about it is that I've been doing, you know, as you mentioned, a, a lot of the movies, thank you, by the way, uh, that I'm making as a filmmaker. And uh, I've been recording a lot of Christmas music for the movies. And so we just thought, well, well, let's put it all out, and you know, as an album so they can hear the full song and, uh, they can see it in the movie or hear it in the movie, but they could have the uh, actual full album and play it, play it during the holidays. So uh, the first thing was bring back the Christmas card. And I sing it as a duet with a wonderful uh, young young lady named Heather Lucadia. And she's a singer that I've had on different films that I've released in the past. And so we we team up on this. And it's really, it's a nostalgic song about um, about people just writing a letter, a card, a simple card. And, you know, it's fun. Put down that cell phone. Just stop. <laughs> yeah. Write a write a Christmas card. It's so easy, you know. Just send a Christmas card. It's really it 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 it's sort of I don't know that was the the theme behind it, and uh, it's really a fun track. Uh, a lot of original and a lot of um, you know kind of old Christmas standards classics as well, but reimagined. And uh, you know I can't wait for everyone to hear it. It should be the first single comes out uh, early next week. And uh, then they'll get the whole album, I think, within about a week or so, the, the full album will be up just in time for Christmas. That's awesome. Um, what was your go to as a as a young person? You know, like, was there a Christmas song on repeat in your house? Oh, yeah, pretty much everything that uh, Bing Crosby, you know, sang and, you know, Frank Sinatra, uh, Dean Martin. I love all of those, uh, you know, Rosemary Clooney. You know, just uh, Why Christmas is, uh, you know, one of my favorite, favorite movies, Christmas in Connecticut, uh, you know, one of my favorites. But I also like the, uh, you know, the Just Friends or um, Love Actually. Uh, mm. that's, <laughs> that's actually probably one of my, you know, that It's a Wonderful Life. OK, if you put it in order, It's a Wonderful Life, number one, favorite movie, Love Actually, probably number two uh, in that order. Yeah, I have a friend who watches Love Actually. No. <laughs> I think on repeat all the time, all the time. I well, love, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, what were you going to say? You love? No, I love the the Bill Nye. You know, I feel it in my fingers. I feel it in my toes. Christmas is all around you, and so the it, feeling goes. It's just so he fun. Is, he is phenomenal in that. Yeah. Phenomenal. <laughs> Well, uh, welcome back to Genoa City. And Thank you. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 oh, I know, sorry. all of that. And, and you posted this earlier. This comes out tomorrow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I love that. Pick up your Soap Digest. Um, love Soap Digest. Yeah, seriously, yeah. you know, Danny's been back many times over the years for big events like the 50th anniversary, but this time he's coming back to see his family how does it feel seeing all the love? Because I've been seeing it on social media about, you know, your return and something you started so long ago, a character you created so long ago. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's it gives me a, a warm and fuzzy feeling. Uh, it's just really the, the, the audience has been incredible. The supporters and the Young and the Restless fans are extraordinary. And, you know, we're we're part of a family. We've been... You know, I've been in their living rooms since 1981. You know what I mean? On the old tube televisions before smart TVs. It was there, you know, so. Uh, those, those big clunky things. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Where you had to whack them, you know, and move them in tennis. <laughs> and, you know. uh, so that's really, a, I mean, it's, it's, there's a lot of nostalgia. There's a lot of, uh, what I, what I really love about it is that I, I kind of use the same parallel with music and why music is so important and songs are so important is because 
usually when a song hits you, you know, it embeds a time in your life and an experience, it, the weather, friendships, you know, <laughs> the smell in the air, you know, just everything. And so what's really nice is that, you know, when you come back to the show and people get to reconnect with some of those great times back when, you know, because mostly I get on social media, by the way, people are wonderful with the things they've been writing. I really loved all their thoughts and their kind words, but they say most of them it is, I watched this with my mom. Mm -hmm. I watched this, you know, with my grandparents. I, this brings back so many great memories. Us all sitting there watching the show and watching, you know, Danny and cricket and, and, uh, the concerts and, um, you know, your concert was the first concert I'd been to. And I, I saw it, you know, I saw your concert on young on restless. And then I went to your show live. Uh, and, uh, you know, so those, um, um, those those memories are, are important to people, and and it's really important to me that I was able to to be uh, to play a part in that. So it, it I'm really grateful. Um, I, I love that. You know, you you said something that made me think. You know, 1981, yeah. no social media. You know, no. waiting for that snail like, mail oh, to oh, arrive. Oh, 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 the phone was like <laughs> GI Joe. You know. The, Totally. The brick. The brick. Watch, um, watch. I saw Lethal Weapon the other day. Watch it. The one the Lethal Weapon where he, he tries to make a, a phone a, a phone call, you know, on his cell phone. And he, he goes on the bridge with a giant thing and carries the thing and tries to make that call. And I was like, watch it the other day. I'm like, oh, my gosh, that I forgot about the big brick phone. So sorry. I didn't mean to derail you. Keep going. Um, no, no, no. Um, you know, you, you had to wait for the snail mail to arrive at the CBS Broadcast yeah. Center. And now, yeah. you know, here we are talking about that yeah. instant connection that you have on a daily basis with fans. That's incredible. It's, a, it's an amazing gift. And, and we're so fortunate to be living in these times where we can, you know, communicate. And, and, and like you said, instantly, we can talk about what just happened today. And, and they watched the show today. And it's really great. We can, hey... I just saw it and I can't believe that, you know, you and Phyllis were, you know, <laughs> were you going to give her a kiss? You know, it's like that. It's, it's fun. You know, it's like, well, you know, he is single. I mean, you know, Danny's. <laughs> <laughs> he is single. Um, Charlie Ann just said, hey there, one of my 80s dream guys. <laughs> um, Love you. Thank you. Take me back to the 50th party in March. What what was it like, you know, celebrating in such a grand style with and seeing everybody you probably hadn't seen in a long time? Oh, it was incredible. It was, uh, first of all, the party in itself was, a. I, I felt like I was at the Oscars. I mean, they did this, they rolled out the red carpet, literally. I mean, it was really a very special event, just the way they, the setting and, um, you know, the, music, the food, the champagne flowing and, and everybody together taking photos and uh, cast crew, you know, uh, the whole production team, everybody, uh, you know, coming together. Um, and I've seen, like like you said, I, I, I got a chance to say hello to, to so many wonderful, you know, actors and, and crew members and production staff writers and people that I haven't seen for, for a long time. And so, um, yeah, it was really, it's quite special to be a part of that. I love that. Um, talk about the first days back you, working uh, when you first came back, Michelle Stratford, Stafford and yeah. Michael Grazade. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, they're, they're, they're my family, you know, <laughs> Come on, Michael, I call him son, just, you know, when I write in real text, life. Yes. Yes. When I text I him, when that. I call him, I say, Hey, dad, you know, <laughs> Meet me, meet me, and let's go run lines. It's dad, or you know, I need to talk to you. <laughs> you know, it's dad. Uh, I just, he's he's wonderful. He's a wonderful person, a wonderful actor. And Michelle is so fun. She's she's great. We have such a good time uh, doing scenes together, and um, her energy is, as you know, is just it's uh, it's infectious. It's beautiful, and she's so uh, passionate and committed, and gets in there and really goes for it, you know, and, uh, uh she, she's and she, all inspires, that. she inspires you, you know, she inspires you to push, to push harder. And, uh, uh, that's great because a lot of times when you're on a show this, this many years, it's hard to, um, to maintain a certain level, you know what I mean? You, you, you find dynamic levels and, and it's always hard to challenge yourself. You always have to find ways to, to, uh, make things fresh, new. And, uh, 
uh, that's what I've been enjoying coming back. I've, I've enjoyed the writing has been really good and really a lot of fun. Uh, you know, just, I don't know if you saw the scene where I'm talking to Phyllis and I'm just, you know, t- so I, I, was, I couldn't believe the stuff I'm saying. I was like, come on, Phyllis, you know, all the stuff you've been doing, come on. But, but kind of have joking about it, like not, you know, cause it, I guess it could have been very serious and heavy, but you know, I just took the approach of, Hey, you just keep getting in your own way. Come on, you know, snap out of it. <laughs> you know? With the, you can with change the if you want to change, but you've got to get in there and you've got to go, you know, words yeah. aren't enough. Come on, let's, let's see the real change. So I don't know if that's happening, but you know, we'll see. Uh, I, I love it. Is it true? The show asked you to brush up on your piano? Um, no, but they said, they said, are you, uh, you know, are you good with, uh, you know, playing? I was like, yeah, of course I'm, <laughs> I'm ready. Are you kidding? I've got one in every room of my house. I've got one, you know, I, I travel exactly. with them. I always have a piano, but, uh, it was fun. Yeah. It was fun. You know, throwing out the stuff. What's fun is that, you know, cause what I haven't done in the past is I haven't done two shows in one day and that's the new schedule. Some days you'll be doing two shows. So that was a nice little twist. The <laughs> double dosage of dialogue. Oh, and then also you're going to be playing the piano and doing these things. With the, and I thought, oh, okay. So I really have to, you know, I got to really study. Uh, so uh, it's been they're, they're They're making making sure you're, you know, well, well awake and uh, ready yeah, to go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they don't want me drifting off, you know. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> I really love the challenge. I really love the the uh, uh, the new challenges. That's the way I've approached um, my return, you know, to the show. Is I really wanted to challenge myself uh, in in the acting role, and the show has been incredible because they've given me a lot of challenging things to do. Because I can't do it on my own. I need I need the writing, and yeah, you know, it starts uh, there. You got It's all yeah. <laughs> I'm saying if it ain't on the page, it ain't on the stage. <laughs> One hundred percent. You know, remind everybody. Will you take us back and tell us how music first entered your life? Well, um, my mother was a concert pianist, and she taught all eight of my brothers and sisters uh, music and music theory. And then from there, everybody br- branched off into different instruments. And I started playing the, the the piano, and I took took up vibes. I also played clarinet for for a while and trombone, and you know so and then our band played together we were together for about 10 years as a family band and then i um uh did a single call she did it uh, in late uh like 1980 i think it was and um i got the song i got to perform on american bandstand remember with dick clark (laughs) and so um i performed this was what was that like oh it was dick i've been on dick clark's show i think I think three times or so, three or four times. He he was, he really gave me my big break between Dick Clark and you know Bill Bell. You know those two really. Um, I mean that that was just extraordinary. And and Tiger Beat Magazine, Tiger Beat Magazine were you know, that's you know they were huge supporters. That's what I know. I took t- John to meet the editors of Tiger Beat Magazine. Okay. I don't know if he has it in his book, but I hope he remembers that day. Went over there. I was like, you've got to meet my friend. He's an actor. He's he's really great. He's got talent. He's going to be a star. And they said, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Hi. Nice to meet you. I love that, Tiger Bee. Let's take some pictures of you. So, um, uh, yeah, I remember that. That was really a fun experience. But uh, And so um, the, the writers of, you know, Bill Bell and the writers of Young and the Rest of saw me on American Bandstand or saw that performance. And then they were... They came up with the idea of a of a singer, you know, a young a young guy is trying to, that wants to make it in the music business, and so they created the character Danny Romilotti. I was working as a waiter, fantasy working at Jonas's, fantasizing that I was you know a rock star, and I'll never forget with Paul Williams, Doug Davidson, Stephen Ford, my first shows, uh, you know, and uh, you know those were incredible. I was working at Jonas's, and I had the broom with me, and I'm like I'm cleaning up, sweeping, and then all of a sudden the broomstick turns into a microphone stand and it's like, <laughs> she did it. She did it. You know, and then I, then I whip out of my fantasy dream and I'm just sweeping the floor. <laughs> you know? And so, um, so uh, that, that started everything. And, and the show was really, um, uh, they were so collaborative about 
me, Michael Damon, writing music, perform, doing songs, sending the song to Bill Bell. He wrote it in and, you know, into the story. And we just started doing that. And that started happening. And then, of course, one of the songs was Rock On. And, you know, uh, that, you know, as you know, uh, they did a big music video on Young and the Restless. We performed it on, on a big concert thing on the show. And that was really fun. That's incredible. Um, yeah. Do you remember your first day? Absolutely. It was, I, I remember my lines. My line was, um, uh, Paul is trying to tell me about the menu and he's trying to explain, okay, so here's the bar. Here's the, that, uh, you know, um, here, you know, I remember asking him, what's a Singapore sling? Cause that was a drink on the menu that I had to serve some customer. <laughs> And I'll never forget, you know, what's a Singapore sling? Because I had no idea what it was. And he, uh, yeah, I was just, I was like a waiter, busboy at Jonas's. And uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was really fun. Doug Davidson is such a great guy and I really miss working with him. And Stephen Ford, two wonderful people. And and then they brought in Patty Weaver. And that was, that was wonderful. Oh, I was going to ask about your sister. sister. Yeah, I love her. Love Patty. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, um, every time I think uh, hear the name Doug, my sister was in Los Angeles once, and you know my, our mom watched CBS, and that's how I got into As the World Turns and Guiding Light. But watched Y and R, and my sister was driving down I think Rodeo Drive, and Doug was next to her, and she put her her rent a car in reverse oh. just just oh. to wave. <laughs> I love it. Love it. It's such a story that sticks out in my mind. Um, He's so great. Love him. Love was him. there someone, I mean, maybe it was Doug. Was there someone who took you under their their wing when you first walked in the door? Well, yes. Um, two people. One, David Hasselhoff. And Rapper. Yeah. <laughs> he, I'll never forget the first time, you know, he just said, hey, you know, you're going to be great. Don't worry, man. It's going to be a piece of cake. You come in, you do this, you da da da, and and just just he was really. I never did. See, I didn't do scenes with him, just so you know. But he was just giving me this sort of really nice. He was he was he was going out uh, to start his you know his the next wave of his career, and I was coming in, and uh, he gave me great advice. Jeannie Cooper plays Mrs. Chancellor. Played Mrs. Chancellor was just amazing she was always so uh, uh so supportive and always giving me pearls of wisdom <laughs> of her great wisdom about the business and and uh just yeah, yeah. yesterday her. was her birthday i know yeah yeah what 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 do you miss most about genie oh genie was just i just loved every time i'd go up to hair and makeup she was in there and she just she had the whole room just laughing captivated and, captivated you know, and having fun and everybody was just having fun with her and she's like oh dolly come in come in you know and she just was so bigger than life treated everyone you know with kindness every everyone i'm talking every crew intern you know people in the parking lot you know it didn't matter who they were she was always really kind to people and what a lesson for you who, who you know, started in 81, as you just said, yeah. so young, so, you know, you just talked about what David, you know, his kindness. Yeah, he was very, very, you generous, know, yeah. to have that early on has probably yeah. made you the gentleman that you are in, you know, what you do today. Well, I try. I mean, I just, they were, uh, yeah, I mean, they. I, I try to do that with, with people that, join the cast and and uh it's funny i actually what's funny i think michelle stafford and tracy bregman no uh, beth maitland kind of threw my own words back at me it was hilarious the other day because <laughs> i i jumped we were running dialogue right and i said something about the next script or the next show and and they went uh oh, excuse me michael damien we only focus on one scene at a time, one day at a time, and we don't worry about tomorrow. And that's because Michael Damien told me this my first day of the work. And I was like, I told you that? He's like, yes. You said only focus. Yeah, you're going to get overwhelmed. 
I was giving all this advice and I had no idea. I, I, I was like, oh. that, <laughs> you must and have. And Michelle said the same thing. And I was running with her. She's like, no, we do one thing. And I was like, did I tell you that? She goes, yes. I said, I've been hearing that a lot since I've been back, you know, and because they're doing two shows in one day. And so I said, well, I'm, I'm thinking about the other. She's like, no, we're only going to focus on the one show right now and the one scene. We're not going to talk about the other ones until we're done with this one. <laughs> so, I, I mean, funny. it's yeah. not always fun getting things thrown back in your face. <laughs> educational. I love it. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 a re, and a reminder sometimes of the smart things, you, you know, you might, you might say um, the triangle of cricket, Danny and Phyllis. Yeah. I mean, how wild and hear it, you know, that's great. I love it. Right. I mean, so popular. Um, you talked about working opposite Michelle. Talk about Laura Lee. Oh, well, she's, she's talk about, you know, a very kind, very generous person who's just so professional all the time. Um, positive attitude comes in knowing every word of her dialogue, uh, treats everybody you know, with the utmost respect. She's really uh, a, a true professional and really uh, it's fun. It's fun to to come in with somebody who's that, you know, I mean, you know, just think about her upbringing and her, and the way, you know, just her her journey and, and with her dad and mom, the creators, it's a, it's a tough, um, uh, you know, sometimes that can be a, a blessing and sometimes they may not be because, you know, people have preconceived notions, but, you know, if, if they have those, they're wrong because she's, you know, she's, you know, really kind and, you know, she's just like every, every, every other actor that has gotten a part on the show, you know what I mean? And yeah. doesn't ask for anything, um, any special, special. anything. No, yeah. she just, she just, she's, it's really extraordinary actually. And, uh, uh, yeah, we've been having, it's been fun. It's, we, we haven't done, I've done actually more scenes with Michelle you know, since, you know, Michelle and Michael. Is it, is it wild? I mean, it, you know, you know, just to be back and, you know, you know, 81 and, and you, you know, and it's surreal, you know, it's surreal. It's, it's like, uh, uh, let's do the time. Warp again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? Totally. It's a time. I have these, uh, you know, just coming to the building. It's the same building, same parking lot, you know, you know, things, little things have changed and, you know, here and there, but it's really uh, a little faster, a little more work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, maybe a little quicker. I like the fast pace, to be honest with you, because when we make movies, uh, when I make, when I'm, I, we move, uh, you know, it's, it's faster, but slower, meaning we, 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 we shoot over long periods of time, but we're, our pace is very quick. So I kind of, I like the pace uh, of the show. The show feels now more like, uh, live theater when I was doing, you know, Joseph on Broadway, it feels more like a live show, which is fun because uh, you just want to, you want to, and that's the way it should be. When you do a scene, you really should like the first take should be the take. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, well, I'll do 10 or 15 takes and they can figure it all out later. You know what I mean? That's not how it really works. You really need to come in knowing your stuff and that's the way it should be. Well, speaking of Laura Lee, uh, um, Laura Lee and Trisha are going to join me next month, and I'm really excited to meet them both. I just heard that. Yeah, yeah. I, just, uh, I just heard that from uh, Laura Lee in the makeup room. Yeah, yeah. She's, excited. Very... She's like, "Hey, I'm going to be on Ellen's <laughs> show." Yeah, with Trisha. <laughs> I'm excited. Trisha's, Trisha's really great. Yeah, she's she's a wonderful actress, and and I'm oh, really awesome. excited you're going to have her, have them both on. Well, I think fans will love seeing them together too. You know. Yeah. Um, how lucky did you feel really getting that opportunity to, and first of all, could it be any better of a name than Danny Romilotti as a character? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, it made my Italian grandmother and grandfather very happy. They're, they're, they're Ravatinos. So, you know, Armida and Alfredo Ravatino was thrilled when there's like, when I first did, oh my gosh, when I told them, I said, hey, I'm playing an Italian. Danny, was, oh, that's so nice. Uh, <laughs> It's a nice you are to play the Italian, the boy, the, the, the soap, the, the, the play. They should call it the play. I, I see you, the play. That's what you call it. Yeah. <laughs> That's, but what, you know, playing, you know, a rock star and, and, you know, living your life as one performing it on the road during your time there. Yeah. How do you describe that? 
uh, dream come true, luckiest person, you know, on the planet, uh, it, surreal at times, you know, to have my character, you know, have the number one record on the show and then to have it in real life, you have to pinch yourself and kind of go, oh, wow, this is like really happening. And uh, it was just, yeah, the perfect storm, you know, same thing with, you know, and, and that's why I go back to Bill's, you know, brilliant writing is, you know, when I uh, did Joseph and the Amazing Technical Dreamcoat working with Andrew Lloyd Webber, that was written into the show and it was, it was awesome. You know, we got to, you know, Danny's rehearsing for Joseph, you know, on Broadway and, and, uh, you know, that. that's wild. Yeah. Yeah. It was really, we had some of the cast, you know, Kelly Rapke who played uh, the narrator. She came on the show. Stephen Pimlot, our director, uh, came on, uh, playing the director of Joseph. And I had it worked out for Andrew Lloyd Webber, but something happened and uh. I think I think Bill might have written him too much dialogue, you know, the monologue. Because, <laughs> you know, Bill writes these fabulous, Bill wrote fabulous monologues. And I think Andrew Lloyd Webber might have gotten that monologue because I saw the script and I was like, oh, you guys sent him this? <laughs> no wonder he, no wonder he, he, uh, ran, he ran the other way. <laughs> well, uh, listen, I, I would have had trouble doing it. You know, it was like an epic monologue, you know. <laughs> That's great. Tracy, Lauren, and Amy would perform on stage with you. What what stands out from working with Beth, Tracy, and Stephanie? They're great. I mean, Beth Maitland is just such a wonderful person. What a wonderful um, actress and and singer. And uh, uh, Tracy Bregman, oh, she's she's fantastic. Yeah, those were fun times. We, Tracy uh, Bregman and I talk. We joke a lot about the. Uh, I don't know if you remember. Do you remember when Danny? Uh, did a music video against all odds with her and we sang a duet together and did a whole music video and wow. Mrs. Chancellor financed it. Yeah, it was a big, <laughs> yeah, it was a big deal. And I'll never forget we uh, were in the video, the director was Wes Kenny and he, um, he kept saying to me, okay, this is where you give her, you kiss her and you take her in your arms. And I'll never forget the first time I got to meet Tracy Bregman's parents was that video shoot she brought them and there's they're like right there on the side of the stage and he's like kiss her with passion and i'm thinking i don't know her mom and dad are right there i kind of feel <laughs> funky doing that i feel like maybe it's not you know it's like no you gotta this is you know and so he was like i think tracy might have said mom dad you guys why don't you go get a cup of coffee <laughs> uh, that's i mean you and tracy uh had you know competition for the biggest hair back then too Oh yeah, do you have some of those photos? Uh, no, I should have. Lauren and you. Yeah, hang on, hang Lauren's on. Hang on. Yeah. I put my glasses on. I can't see the. I can't. I can't see my. I'll go. Hang on. We're gonna. We're gonna. I'm gonna find you one. I have. I know. I've got them here somewhere. We. Yeah. You know. What we called it. We called it hair wars. <laughs> we. We. I, okay. I, well. I, all I, right. I, okay. Well, this is pretty good. Wow. Can you see? I'm sorry. Good. Yeah, that's good. That's a good <laughs> one, huh? Yeah, we <laughs> that that took a little while to do. Yeah, it got so bad they couldn't get us in a in a close up, you know, a two shot close up because our hair was sticking out too much. So we had to, <laughs> we had to dial it down. We we had so yeah, big eighties hair, huh? Big eighties hair. I had that's big, a, you know, we both did. It, I yeah, know. I saw your big eighties hair. <laughs> um, when you think of Bill and Lee Bell. What comes to mind for you? Well, just wonderful, um, wonderful creators. Um, you know, Bill was incredibly protective of the show and really uh, kept it. He, he he just everything was organized. Everything was every story was tracked. You know what I mean? Every arc was was uh, perfectly you know woven, and he was meticulous about everything and and um just you know brilliant and he you know there's a reason why the show has been you know was number one and has been number one event on this long i mean there's a reason why we had our 50th anniversary you know yeah. that doesn't just happen so um and uh yeah created he created these uh this these rich you know characters with a big foundation and 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 uh 
you know, and they're still, you know, the the Newmans, Victor Newman, come on, Eric Braden, <laughs> my favorite Nikki. Uh, I love <laughs> you can see the affection like radiates off of you about them. Yeah, they're great. And and Eric is just every time I see him, he he still does this, you know, every time I see him, every time he comes up to me, he says, Michael Damon, rock on. <laughs> And, well, and then he does a jab. He does this. Mm. He does a jab. He does a jab. <laughs> yeah, you know, box like a Michael Damon. Rock on. You know, that's, 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 yeah. uh, I, I love that. Uh, Susan just commented on the photo you showed. She said that that's an ode to Aquanet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Moose. We had Moose everywhere. I was, you know, those cans, the giant cans, Paul yeah, Mitchell. Yeah. <laughs> My hair is very tame. I should get it a little wilder. I was just looking at it. it's not very, it's not very exciting. I gotta, I gotta get some moose. Don't you think? A little bit of moose. Moose is good. Moose is good today. I, I use nothing. My husband does, but um, moose and gel. <laughs> um, do you recall the first time you heard a song on the radio? Your song? Uh yes. Uh, I was driving in L.A. and. I think I was on, I want to say Wilshire Boulevard. I think it was Wilshire Boulevard in Beverly Hills. I was driving and I, and I, and I kind of had to sort of, did I have a cassette in, the, in there? Or, you know what I mean? I'd, yeah. I had to check to make sure. And yeah, it was a Kiss FM. And uh, I was like, oh, oh I love that you know. You, I love that you know the station too. That's great. Yeah, it was Kiss FM and then Pirate Radio, a new station that was uh, started by Scott Shannon out of New York. Oh, yeah. And he started uh, Pirate Radio. And the whole thing was that there was no commercial breaks for the first month. So I had the, I was so fortunate to be in the, the top 40 songs uh, playlist for a month just on a loop you know what i mean no commercials so i so if you know just every you wait five minutes you're gonna hear rock on you know or just go to kids fm or go to pirate you know pirate radio and you just ping pong and you could just it was in stereo it's pretty cool that's incredible um when did you leave ynr the first time um i think it was 1990 uh no uh, 90, 98, 99, 99. So you were there for all 18 years. Yes. Straight through. Yes. So, so when you, when you think back of, you know, coming in so young in 81, what, what do you think you learned that has really helped you throughout your career? Oh, I think that all the, all the things that I've learned from the show has helped me um, transfer all of that, you know, um, background and, and, and education into filmmaking. That's why I think that, you know, I'm able to direct and produce and write, um, you know, the movies that we've been able to do, my, my wife, Janine and I, and, you know, I just learning so much from working with wonderful directors, working with wonderful writers and production and seeing how it all the mechanics work and subconsciously and consciously paying attention to how all of the production is working and what it takes to, you know, to make it happen. And so that way, when I was my first day directing, it wasn't, I wasn't just walking onto a set kind of, oh, so this is how it works. <laughs> you know what I mean? I already had the, uh, the amazing school of young and the restless, you know, uh, to teach. I find that to be such a gift. If yeah. you, if you are smart enough, like you were to, okay sit there and well you you did i mean because you also must have known deep down you wanted to do some other things at some point and you watched and observed and and took took that all in because it is i mean how lucky for you of 18 years of of watching it get done it it's uh you know at the time i was really aware that i was you know planning to, to do other things, but I, I will, but I always talked about it. And I, and, you know, I, in fact, I, I tell this, I don't think many people actually know this story, but um, uh, Christoph St. John was actually very inspirational to me as for, for my um, filmmaking career. And oh, oh. Christoph was 
came to me one day. We 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 hung out a lot together. We we spent a lot of time together and so wonderful. And we would talk and and he came to me. He's like, hey Michael, I'm a, I'm gonna I'm gonna produce a movie and show me the script, the the the, the layout, the production, how he was gonna do it, the whole thing. And I was like, this is really cool. Yeah, we're 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 putting together the financing structure and all that stuff. And so I, I remember, you know, coming home and talking to Janine, um, my my wife, and saying, you know, Christoph is making movies, you know, um, and I really like it. I really I, I like what he's doing, and you know, I don't know if necessarily we we'll, we'd be collaborating, but this is something that uh, that uh, hey, you know, if he can do it, I'd like to give it a shot, and I'd like to try it. I think we could. I think we could really do well with this, and uh, so I just that sort of uh, stayed with me. And then I started studying and started studying a lot about directing and uh, uh, cinematography and just learning a lot about the uh, mechanics and just, you know, directing and the technical side, a lot of technical things you got to learn when you're dealing with films and, and, and it's, it's not like a live switch. It's a different, whole different mechanics of directing. And, and, you know, it's all kind of started from there. And how did you and your wife come together to begin, you know, this journey of? Yeah, well, well, Janine is she. She was an incredible writer. We we'd been working on some stuff, and uh, we just I just I said, hey, we need to write. You know, we need to write a script, and and we need to make a movie, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> we do it. And she said, okay, let's do it. And so we, sure enough, it happened, and um, we wrote a pilot in France that I shot in France uh, with the French network TF1 called Red Eye. And, and we shot the pilot. That's when I actually directed because uh, we were having trouble finding a director. I didn't want to direct myself in the pilot. And the French network decided that I should direct it and said, you, you should direct it. And said, I said, okay, well, I didn't want to direct myself, but I'll, I'll do it to make it happen. And so that started there. And, you know, we've now made, um, yeah, I think we're now 15 or 16, um, maybe more now, movies that we've made together. Um, the last one was, well, uh, I don't know if you got a chance to see Folly for Christmas. Um, that was the Netflix Lindsay Lohan return yeah, movie. Not, I did not see it. I will check. You got to watch it this year then. Come on, no yeah, excuses. I will. You're the only person, 151 million people saw it. I, that's incredible. In, yeah. It's in, in, I mean, that's got to feel great. But, uh, you know, going back, thinking that Red Eye, you said, right? Yep, Red Eye, yep. First one, you, you know, who is Michael Damien directing that? And now the, the new Lindsay movie coming in 2024. Like, how mo much of a difference in you would you say? Like, how do you describe that? Well, I, I actually, I left out, I did a, uh, we did a short film called Finders Keepers. I, we actually wrote, the first thing was a, was a sci-fi uh, was a sci-fi pilot, or actually not. It was not a pilot. It was a, it was a, a short film, and that we we made and entered into film festivals. And um, it was about a farmer in a in a you know out in the middle of you know somewhere in the Midwest and just you know farming. And he actually digs up a spacecraft, and and in his farm fields, it was buried in, in the tomb and stuff. And so we 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 did that first, and uh, uh, you know. Um, that was that was really the very that was the very first project, but we've made a lot of movies. We we did uh, we did the Falling for Christmas. We did a uh, um, Irish Wish is going to be coming. I think you mentioned it in yeah. twenty twenty four. It also stars Lindsay Lohan. That's Netflix, but uh, Paris Christmas Waltz is coming um, November nineteenth, and that's and that on oh it's it, this month. Yeah or, yeah yeah it's coming out November November yeah November nineteenth. Uh, it's a GAF uh, family uh, network, uh, which is also Sony PureFlix, so they can see it on on all of those uh, the, the the network and uh, on the, and the streaming service as well. But um, yeah, that's November nineteenth. And what was it like working with Matthew Morrison? Oh my gosh, he's so awesome! I loved it. We had so much in common. We just yeah, we, I mean, a theater a theater person like yourself. We had a great time together. Matthew Morrison, I mean, if you all know him from Glee, uh, I just, I loved Glee. That's one of my favorite shows. And so. Amen, Michael, mine too. And, and for me, differently, you know, as a gay man, 
who grew up in the 80s and there was no representation, I felt uh, uh, a commitment that I had to watch that from beginning to end because I thought it did so much good for mm -hmm. young kids growing up at the time it was there. And even today, I think yeah. it's still so popular. It really is. It's it's a, it's a wonderful show, and uh, Matthew's an and incredible. And he was wonderful. Oh yeah, loved him. And so when we found out he was available, and uh, you know, uh, I mean, come on, it's about a it's about a dancer who has pretty much um, lost his joy for dance and competing, and uh, meets this young lady by chance and um, they enter this incredible Paris Pro-Am competition. And, uh, and, and, and they're brought together by his mentor who has a health issue and he's a choreographer and he wants his last piece, potentially his last piece to be, you know, performed by Matthew Morrison's character, Leo. And so- And Matthew's the one who lost his interest Yes, he lost his oh. joy for dance, and and this, you know, sparkling, wonderful person, uh, played by Jen Lilly, who's fabulous. You're going to really like her in this, uh, and and the dance numbers are really fun. We do a Broadway street number. I mean, we do. It's it's fun. It's fun. I can't wait for it. Oh, see it. I, I mean, I I mean, I could watch Matthew dance any day of the week. Oh well, I you're going to see a lot of dancing on the 19th. Oh, I can't. Oh, I can't wait. That's that's amazing. Um, a lot of fans have been asking you to share any memories of Facts of Life. Oh my gosh, I had so much fun playing Flyman on Facts of Life. That was <laughs> that was great with Nancy Vakian and Kim Fields. Yep. Oh my gosh, it was uh, so much fun. Um, yeah, I, I gosh, I'm trying to remember. That was a that was a really great time. And they were also doing uh, um, uh, facts, facts of life, and uh, different strokes were were like kind of on the same st stages. And I used to see, you know, Todd Bridges and everybody from different, oh, different, oh. Strokes, doing different strokes. But uh, you know, oh, and Mindy Cohen was fantastic yeah. on the show, and Lisa Welchel. Uh, but I mostly did my scenes with Nancy McKeon, who's a friend of mine, and she's wonderful. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I love that. I, I mean. Yeah. Um, she just did a like a book reading with Melanie Smith, who used to be on As the World Turns, because they are close oh, friends. And I was neat. hoping to go down in New Hope, Pennsylvania, and I couldn't make it. Um, Ann Patrick says, The Christmas Waltz is my absolute favorite film that you directed. It's so poignant, and the leads don't even share a kiss. <laughs> I know. Well, we're going to change that with Paris Christmas Waltz. Okay. It's, 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 <laughs> Paris Christmas Waltz is part of my wife and I created this sort of dance universe of movies and we want to make a bunch of different movies about this. And one, the first one was Christmas Waltz. This is Paris Christmas Waltz. And we're looking to do, you know, uh, the Vienna tango and, you know, we're, 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 we love dance, but she's a former dance woman. She still dances. She's an incredible dancer, Janine, uh, my wife who danced with Michael Jackson and Prince and she was on solid gold oh, wow. for, for all those years. Yeah. She's so that's why uh, we're really having fun doing the the dance musical type projects. Oh, great. Yeah. I love that. Um, how do you work together? What's like the process? Who, you know, when you're writing or, you know, coming um, up, like, is there, is there a frick, uh, you know, not, you know, do you struggle on who's going to do what or do you, no, is it a no harmonious? Struggle. Yeah, it's very harmonious. I just don't touch the computer. That's all. As long as I don't touch the computer, it's great. You know what I mean? Not and touch I that for my goal. <laughs> I shouldn't, because what's hilarious? I walk around the room and I'm acting the scenes out, and she's doing it with me, and she'll say, "Slow down, slow down." I'm like, "Okay," and then I'll walk around. I'll look. I'll go. You didn't write that in there. She goes, "Yeah, I don't like that line." And so, <laughs> so <laughs> you're right. Okay, <laughs> just something better, and then she writes something better, and I'm like, "Oh, that's better." Um, and Janine has now become uh, a fabulous director and she directed Falling for Christmas and I produced it. So it's like, okay, now it's your turn. You're up to bat, you know, and, awesome. and she knocked it out of the park. Uh, and um, 
they're going to, when you see Folly, uh, Irish Wish, Irish Wish is really spectacular. She did a great job on that. And then I now, she's like, okay, now your turn. And now I did uh, a Paris Christmas Walls I directed. And she I love it. It's like big turns. I mean, yeah, because it's really, it's it, it, directing is so complicated and it's it just, the amount of energy and time it, that you have to put in. And believe me, we love to work. It's not that we don't, it's just that it's it's great to, you know, um, you know, she can direct, I can produce, help do a lot of stuff that, that needs to be done to make the movie that she wants, you know, to put it on the screen and then she's been, and vice versa. So, you know, I'm just checking. I wanna make sure that, you know, we're blocking scenes today. I gotta make sure I miss my blocking today. I'm, I'm actually at the, uh, I'm at CBS right now. <laughs> wow. I mean, I don't know. Everybody I can see. Share my Genoa City sign with me, you know. <laughs> your, your Genoa City sign. Yeah. Uh, um, I totally, oh, how did you and Janine meet? Um, we met on, uh, it was, uh, believe it or not, it was in Utah at the Osmond Television Studio. And I was wow. doing the uh, Children's Miracle Network tele Telethon. And they chartered a plane. They flew a bunch of, of actors and singers and stars from LA to do the telethon. And I saw her on the plane and she was with this guy that I love, uh, uh, James Best, who plays Roscoe on the Dukes of Hazard. Uh, and I thought it was her boyfriend. And then my brother later tells me that's their dad. And so I, I was like, oh, good. I can, I can talk to her. Because I was a little bit, you know, I, I was like, oh, um, Roscoe's got a great looking girlfriend, you know. And, and then I later, <laughs> my brother's like, you idiot. That's her dad. I'm like, oh, okay. Hi, I'm Michael Damon. <laughs> and, and now how many years together? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I gotta get my calculator out. I try to calculate. <laughs> so that's okay. You know, so, so, that means just, you know, we're, so you, feel like you have tackled music, <laughs> acting, writing, directing, producing. Is there one that truly brings you the most joy? Um, I that's a great question. I really um I, I love it all and they're all somehow or another integrated in a, in a strange way. They all have a connector. And um, because I've been able to play a musician most of the time in my acting, the music has stayed close, you know? So that's it. that's really been an interesting uh, 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 fusion, if you want to call it. And so um, uh, not, to, not to skirt around the question, um, obviously music, it all started with music, so that's my first love. And then, you know, I, I, I love acting and I love filmmaking. And what's great about filmmaking is you're working with all the, you know, the composer and yeah, picking out songs and music is so, is so important to the theatrical experience, you know. And so um, they're all they're all connected. And um, I don't know. I, I mean, I love them all. I don't know if I, uh, I guess. It depends on what I'm doing that day. Today, yeah, I love acting. Yeah. I, 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 anyway, I, love the rest I love acting, you know. <laughs> when I'm studio, I love how you talk yeah. about the music. Yeah. Is there a film that you saw early on that stands out to you about how integral the music was in, in you know, that viewing experience for you? Yes, Greece, John Travolta, yeah. Westwood Village. <laughs> Yeah. Star Wars, you know. God, uh, yeah. Star Wars, but but I think Greece was like I, I just remember. I know that's a musical, but I just remember that was. I, 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 uh, yeah. In Westwood, I was like, oh, okay, I want to do that. You know. <laughs> I mean, you know it was very inspirational to see that movie on the on the big screen, and I just uh, loved it so much. Still do. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it really. I agree. I, I'll never forget seeing that for the first time. And it's incredible, falling, huh? Yeah, falling in love with Olivia. And my, you know, I remember my parents took me. It's like one of those that you just, and Star Wars too. I'm, you know, my father took me, and, you know, those are just, yeah. And the minute you hear, especially even more Star Wars, I mean, Greece still has a great reaction, but that Star Wars, you know, the theme um, is amazing, isn't it? It, it, it you know, you're like the hair in your arm stands yeah. up because it has such a yeah. 
You know, it's right up there with you got some overhead lifters and a full barrel carburetor, creep dog and whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Um, but, uh, yeah. What's, I mean, you've done a number of stage roles. Is there a favorite stage role? Is Joseph the favorite or? Um, well, that was really, you know, that was, that's, that's the one I did. Uh, I, I did some earlier stuff. My, believe it or not, way back, my brother wrote a couple of musicals when I was a kid and he had me in the musicals at, at a very young age, me and my younger sister. So uh, yeah, my brother, Larry, uh, great writer, producer. He's really the one that, that worked so hard, you know, to get me, uh, you know, to where I am today. My brothers were my, uh, my whole family, my brothers and my sisters, but you know, uh, you know, we were, we worked, you know, really, we, it was a really great family unit and we all loved music and wanted, you know, to succeed in the music business. And I know I kind of went a different direction and acting, you know, but it kept, it pulled the music into a different realm for us in a good way. Um, and uh, my brothers, Larry and Tom have been uh, incredibly supportive and, and, you know, really to this day, I mean, we're working in the studio right now. My brothers, uh, Tom has an incredible studio. He's, he's, you know, Grammy award winner, producer, engineer, and, He's recorded, you know, Gwen Stefani, no doubt, Rod Stewart, or Clapton, you know, just everybody over at his studio. So I'm always over there, and all the guys that play on my records and this this new stuff coming out have played on every, you know, uh, all the big hit records. So um, I can't wait for everyone to hear it too. Just Do you have a favorite stuff. track on the Christmas album? Is there one? Well, right now I would say "Bring Back the Christmas Card" is just. Uh, it's, a, it's a great idea for you know because you're right. We don't write anymore. Yeah, just, you know, just put down that cell phone for a minute. <laughs> pick up the pen, pick up a card and, you know, put yeah. it in the mail. Yeah. You don't even mail. It's not that yeah. hard to just send out a Christmas card. You know, it's really fun. It's really fun. Can't wait for everyone to hear it. I, I love that. Well, you'll you'll hear immediately on social media. Yeah, yeah next week it'll be it'll be out. Yeah. When when you look, you know, back on your long career is there something you're most proud of um wow that's a good question well i think that we talked about them i think you know um uh oh let me digress for a second what's hilarious is i left out a very important part of the story about when you asked me how it all started uh oh i wonder if that's the show calling me no it's not <laughs> Matt, me, where you are, he'll come. He'll he'll come the drag. Stage. Don't they know I'm here in the building? I'm in the building here. Um, <laughs> he'll come and, drag you. You know what's really funny is that um, remember I told you I was on. I, I did American Bandstand and the producer and you know, the rest of saw me on Bandstand and came up with the character, and they called me to to you know to play this role, and I'll never forget they did say, "Oh, we forgot to ask. Do you, do you act?" And I said. Hey, oh, come on. Of course I act. What are you kidding? Oh, good. Yeah, we just wanted, we just, we just, we talked about everything else, but we didn't ever ask you the question. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I, I got off the phone. I, Larry, my brother, I'm like, you need to teach me how to act right now. We, I need help, stat. Okay. They want me to go in and do, they want me to put me on camera to, tomorrow or in two days, you know. And so I, you know, I, it started. It happened fast. Is, it happened fast. Uh, anyway, so I, I would say going here back we to are 42 40, years later, you, you yeah. must be doing something right. <laughs> well, Larry, Larry possibly Larry helped or. Yeah, he's a great teacher. He was a great coach. Um, I would say, you know, uh, young and the restless. I, I, I mean, the different things are, um, you know, uh, uh, my dream. Look, my dream, my goal was. I remember telling my brothers and growing up and saying, "I want to have a number one record." <laughs> it's not like a. I want to have a number one goal. I want to have a number one gold record. You know, and you know, it's like somebody saying they want an Olympic gold medal. That's pretty much, you know, and you work hard and you, you dream about it. I just, you know, that's what I dreamt about having and. So, uh, you know, to have your dream come true and have it happen is, you know, an incredible experience. And then, you know, uh, working with one of my favorite of all time composers and Andrew Lloyd Webber, I was obsessed with Phantom of the Opera. 
all of his musicals. And so when I got a call from him to play, you know, Joseph on Broadway, I was, you know, that was, you know, incredible and just uh, a great honor. And, and I got to record the soundtrack with him, uh, the Grammy Award, or I think we were nominated. We might've lost, oh well, but we got nominated. I'll never forget right. recording the soundtrack with him in London um, at Abbey Road Studio, you know, the, the famous- I, I'm pretty sure I saw you do it on Broadway. I mean, well, it, it's a long time. I, I know I, I, I'm pretty, you know. Yeah, because the only other time it was on, it was on Broadway as a very small production in the early 70s. So- yeah, Oh, then I definitely, yeah, then it definitely. Yeah. How could you forget um, me? I cannot believe no, it. Well, it's a lot. For <laughs> go, 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 Alan, you know what they say. Go, 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 Alan, you make it someday. Don't give up, Alan. Uh, Keep going. I just want to read, before I let you go, Kathy Hendricks says, I love the Christmas shows Michael's family have done. Such a talented family. Oh, thank you. Love you. Thank Michael, you so much. So fun to hang out with you. Thank you so much for doing this. I'm so glad it worked. Yes. Finally, we did it. That. Yeah, I know. And uh, go have fun upstairs. Uh, yeah. And, and, and for everybody, go pick this up tomorrow. Yeah, we got some. Uh, I you know, fans fun. were writing. You know, some want you with Phyllis, some want you with Lauren, some want you with Cricket. <laughs> I love it. Just, just as long as they want me, I'm. I'm yeah, I'm, exactly. To be wanted is the best we part. Say, Go away, Danny. <laughs> no, we're gonna have some fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to it, and I think the the audience and the fans are gonna enjoy some of the stuff coming up. Uh, we got some really fun stuff. You know, it, they love seeing. You know family and and yeah. seeing you come back is is family so continued okay. success thank you alan you Have rock a great on okay <laughs> you, alan? you too hey, alan nope. rock and roll rock on don't okay, work too hard you. upstairs love you love bye you. Thank you so much thank you have a great, great day thanks everybody thank you to Michael Damien for spending the hour and looking back at his time on The Young and the Restless and everything else he's done. Don't forget to watch The Young and the Restless weekdays on CBS at 12.30 Eastern. Um, I have to give a birthday shout out to my favorite angel, Jacqueline Smith, today. Please join me next Wednesday when Jeremy Lentz of the Teaneck International Film Festival joins me live. And on Thursday, please come meet Danny Robertson and Ron Danta, who have been running Danny and Ron's Rescue for 18 years. If you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do so down below. Turn on the notifications for reminders of all upcoming shows. And if you like to stream The Locker Room, you can search The Locker Room on your favorite streaming platforms. Actually, uh, my birthday episode with Jill Laurie Hurst and Kim Zimmer is out right now. Have a great afternoon, everybody. I will see you next Wednesday. Stay safe.